In this video, I'm going to show you the high-level structure that every RxJava operation uses to complete both the simplest and the most complex workflows. The anatomy of this process is pretty much the same across all workflow types, regardless of their complexity. So to understand how this works in code, you'll first need to know how it works in theory. This video is broken down into five parts. Well, first, we'll start at a bare bones minimal example that you need in order to use RxJava. Then we'll move on to a couple terms with observables and subscribers. And then we'll build on the minimal example with a more common example, and we'll finally add threads to that. At the end of this video, we'll look at a very robust example where basically we use every single concept that RxJava uses to create an entire workflow. So let's get into it. Starting with a minimal example, let's take a look at a diagram showing the lifecycle of an RxJava application. As you can see, it sort of looks like a chain where you have one step going on to the next. Let's break this down a bit further. At the beginning, you have an RxJava operation called an observable. You can think of an observable as just being an RxJava type, a type that RxJava can use with subsequent operations. There's only a few of them, so we'll discuss that a little bit more later on, but just know that the overarching type is often called an observable. And the next thing you can see is we have a subscriber at the bottom. Now, whenever you look this up inside of RxJava documentation, sometimes you'll see the subscriber also called an observer. Now, that's the exact same thing. It's just using different terminology. They kind of go back and forth on them, but just know that they're referring to the same thing. This is effectively an action response flow or an action reaction flow where something happens in the observable and you find out about it in a subscriber. So that's the end of the very first step. Now I'd like to break down what an observable and a subscriber really is. Now these are two of the most fundamental concepts inside of RxJava, so it's important that we really cement our understanding of them. An observable is something that is either synchronous or asynchronous that you can respond to at a later time or whenever you're ready. So you could think of this operation as giving you, say, a piece of data, or maybe giving you a successful versus an error outcome. There's many ways that you can express this data, but it's effectively something that you wait to get a response on. In computer programming, we're used to instructions running incrementally, one after another, in the order that you wrote them in your code. But that's not necessarily going to be the case with things that RxJava does, because you could be giving it asynchronous jobs, or you could have multiple things that are running in parallel. So an observable is RxJava's paradigm for bringing the incremental step-by-step -step idea back into code that could potentially be asynchronous or parallel. So an observable is a mechanism for retrieving a result from those kinds of operations. Subscribers are anything later on in your code or further down in your code that capture the outcome of an observable that was higher up in the code. So just as a reminder, subscribers are also sometimes called observers. In my opinion, observers are a more direct name, but it is less common, so I'm just going to stick with subscribers for this. Observables also always come before subscribers. You can't have something that you're subscribing on if there's nothing that needs to be observed. Now hopefully you understand the difference between observables and subscribers, because we're going to be doing this throughout the rest of the course. Now let's move on to breaking down a more common use case. Admittedly, the example that I just gave you wasn't all that interesting. You had one piece of information that was given to you from an observable and then was passed on to a subscriber. But really, this example was so bare bones, it's not even common, but it was technically the minimum. So I figured it was worth showing you. Now let's make this a little bit more interesting by adding in what are called operators. Operators are steps that live in between the initial observable and the final subscriber. It effectively allows you to transform or manipulate your data in some fashion. One common use case for an operator would be if you have an observable that gives you data from a server, you may want to clean it up with an operator in between before you pass it on to the subscriber at the very end. RxJava allows you to chain as many of these operators together as you want in between the initial observable and the final subscriber. And in fact, the way you build up this entire chain feels almost exactly like the Java builder paradigm. These operators can also contain their own observables to introduce more rich data to the end result or to walk through a series of steps with necessary data. So for example, imagine you need to make a call to a server. The very first thing you may need to do is prefetch a token to authorize the call to that server. That's the first step that you can do with one operator. Then the next operator can actually make that call using the token you just got and then pass the result to the final subscriber at the end. So in the end, you can have a very polished end result that took two steps to get there. But most likely you're not interested in the token, you're interested in the end result from the server call. Operators also excel at getting results from parallel operations or reducing data down and is something that's useful to you. We'll look into all of this a little bit later. And to be honest, this is the most complex, but even the most exciting and powerful part of RxJava. Let's enhance this example a little bit more by adding threading to it. Now it's incredibly common to have a complex RxJava workflow where you may need to switch between a foreground thread and a background thread. So in the foreground, you may want to manipulate the UI. In the background, you may want to make a networking call. RxJava does this with a paradigm that it calls schedulers. Schedulers are just managed threads or thread pools created by RxJava for a very specific purpose. 
Now it's gone through and done all the hard work of doing this for you. All you need to do is throw it into the mix of operators between the initial observable and the final subscriber. It can go in anywhere in there, but you should do it in a place that makes sense to you. You can also have multiple schedulers in the mix so you can switch thread contexts on the fly. So now we've fleshed out a very common use case. Let's take a look at what I'm gonna call a robust example, which adds one more component to the mix. As you can see with this diagram, we now have a disposable at the very end. Now this is a way for the subscriber, that thing that used to be at the very end, to provide feedback to things that are happening further upstream. Now this isn't very useful for one and done operations. Like you make one server call and you get the response one time and you process it. It's not so useful for those cases, but it is more useful for operations that are either long running or can occur on a regular basis. We'll get into that a little bit more later on, but this is effectively a way that you can cancel those operations at the very end. So now that you've seen this last example, you've really seen everything that you need to know about how RxJava works with a lifecycle. We started early on with a very minimal example, and then we moved on to describing what observables and subscribers are. And then we moved on to a use case, which is much more common, and then we added threads to the mix. And then finally, we looked at a robust example that added a disposable at the very end. That is a 500 foot view of how RxJava works, but we obviously need to go deeper. We'll start in the next video by taking a look at observables and the five different types that RxJava provides. Really, once you understand how they work, it really is a simple concept. I'll see you in the next video.